Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, today I'm going to take you through basically the process of disassembling an Audi 016 Quattro transmission. I picked up one off of an old 200 to swap into my 4000 here because I was having some trouble with third gear. So today I'm just going to walk you through basically complete teardown uh, down to the gear carrier and what everything on it looks like. So here is the standard 016 transmission. Uh, they change a little bit throughout the several iterations that Audi has, but for the most part they're all generally the same. You can tell it's an 016 pretty quickly because it has three distinct components. Number one, we have the bell housing up here, and that also holds the uh, differential. And then in the middle here we have the gear carrier assembly, and then in the back here we have the um, housing that holds the center differential lock. Now the 200 016 transmission does not have an external locker but the 4000 does and there's a few other differences that I'll go into detail in. But for the most part every 016 transmission should look something like this and the bell housing for all of them um, as far as I know mates up to the 2.2 block. My 4000 is running a JT block and both of these bell housings are almost completely identical. Now as you can see the slave cylinder on the 200's uh, 016 transmission is held in by this bolt here but if you look at the slave cylinder on the 4000's 016 bell housing it's held in by this pin up here so that's one of the major differences. If you're going to be swapping these transmissions um, I would recommend keeping your 4000 bell housing, that's what I'm doing. So I'm just going to be swapping the gear carrier into this bell housing. Another difference you'll see is that the pin for the shift stabilizing linkage um, on the 4000 it's using the hole up front, but in the 200 it's using this hole back here. So you'll need to move that if you're using the 200. Another difference you can notice is that um, by the time they started making the 200s, this transmission I think is an 89. They had switched the speedometer to electronic, and in my 4000, um, it was just a cable speedometer. So that's something else to keep in mind. If you're going to swap these, you need to figure out what kind of speedometer you're using. So moving to the back of the transmission where the output shaft is, um, one thing you'll notice is the 200 does not have any external interface. And then if you look at my 4000, um, it has this external differential lock. It's mechanical because this is when the B2s were still using the uh, open differential, so you needed to lock it so you didn't lose traction. And this is the mechanical locker for that. There's an external lever with a vacuum box that pulls that. So if you're swapping it into a 4000, you're going to need to have this uh, differential lock unless you just don't care about locking your differentials. So speaking of this uh, mechanical differential lock right here, this is actuated by this vacuum box and it's really old. It's got a lot of cracks in it. I'm pretty sure this one doesn't even work anymore. Uh, and I really don't like having this potential vacuum leak in my system. So what I'm doing while I have this off is I'm actually going to be replacing this with just a solenoid actuator. Um, I think it was meant to be a door lock actuator, but I found two of them on Amazon for $10 and ordering a new vacuum box is like 60. So I'm going to post a link to that as well if you're interested in revamping your diff lock system. One thing to note about these transmissions is that the um, shift bushing on the ball right here is really bad to get loose. The, the one on the 200 is actually not that bad. But the one on my 4000 actually got so loose that the entire shift linkage could come off of the ball. So um, what I did was I ordered a new bushing from 034. Uh, I'll post the link in the comments. They make really good aftermarket stuff for Audi and that's one of the only places I could find that replacement bushing for the 016. So getting to the meat of the transmission, this is the gear carrier assembly. Um, this is the reason I tore down the 016 for my 4000 and the reason I actually bought a new one because third gear had totally seized up 
Um, the synchronizer was completely shot and it was missing several gear teeth. So I just decided to replace the transmission uh, gear carrier assembly. You can see the coating on my 4000 is an 016301211F and that's clarified down here. Um, it was made in 85, it's got a WD code on it. You will find that um, any 016 transmission will have the same shape although it will have some minor changes. So the first thing that you're going to want to do with your transmission is, of course, drain the fluid out of it. I left mine standing upright overnight so that all the fluid could make its way down into the uh, bell housing. What you have here is the drain plug on the bottom and the fill plug right here. They're female. Um, they're a 17 millimeter. If you don't have a driver, I found that just welding a bolt and nut together could make your own driver. So that's what I made um, to undo the plugs on mine. And there's not much fluid in these at all. While you're waiting for the oil to drain, you can go ahead and pull the uh, fork and throttle bearing. This takes an 11 millimeter. And you'll get these two weird little metal pieces off. And then the whole thing just slides right off. So there's your fork and throat bearing. If you want to, you can go ahead and take this sleeve off as well. And it also takes an 11 millimeter. Chances are, if you've got your 200 transmission out of the car, you've already disconnected the linkage. I guess at the junkyard they just uh, stripped it and cut it off to get it loose from the car. So I have to remove these, but yours should already be off. Now one thing to notice about your car, if your shifting seems to be really loose, um, you can see right now this guy is totally locked down. Um, the ball is really well seated, but in my old one, this ball has a lot of play in it. I've heard of some people just welding the bottom of the ball back in. Um, if you only have one of these, that's what I recommend doing. If you can, I'll go ahead and pull another one off. I'm going to keep the one off this 200 because it's a lot tighter. And it's actually going to be able to uh, really crispen up the feel of the shifter. So So once you have your transmission upright, the very first thing that you're going to want to do is undo this 17, uh, 17 millimeter bolt. This is covering up the bolt that holds your input shaft in place. So you're going to want to break that loose and get it out of the way like as soon as you can. So on my 4000, uh, the nut that you remove from that is just this. But for this 200, it has this little guide here. And if you take a flashlight and look down in this hole, you're going to see the end of the input shaft. Now, on the 4000 input shaft, it was just held in place by this regular Torx bit. However, in the 200, you're going to need a triple square. And this is a 12 millimeter triple square. I think I picked these up at Napa a long time ago. They're kind of hard to find. So get this before you start. I'll post this in the description. And this fits directly into the end of the input shaft. And this is how you're going to loosen the input shaft. The next step is to actually remove that bolt that holds the input shaft into the end of the uh, differential locker. Now if you're by yourself, this is going to be pretty difficult, but I have found a few workarounds. I ordered a new clutch plate and pressure plate already, so um, this clutch plate is pretty much scrap. What I do is I slip it onto the end of the input shaft 
And then you can pick a slot on the side where you can get a pair of vice grips or something in. And you can actually lock them down on the clutch plate. And now you have something to hold your input shaft from turning whilst you loosen this bolt. And this takes a lot of force. Once you've successfully broken that loose, you can pop your clutch plate back off and then stand the transmission back up. Now that we have loosened that 12 millimeter uh, triple square that was holding the input shaft in, we can now go and undo um, all the bolts that hold the differential lock on and the output shaft. And I believe there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. And they take a six millimeter hex. Um, these things are really bad to strip out, so please use caution. So once you have successfully broken all seven of those bolts loose, um, the next thing you're going to have to do is separate the differential locker and everything from the gear housing. I also have a come along. Uh, rigged to the ceiling and this helps if things like this get stuck uh, you can just put a little bit of vertical pressure on it as you knock it loose and then once you've got everything broken loose you can just pick up the differential straight off the end just like that. Okay, so before we can uh, actually remove the gear carrier assembly, first thing we gotta do is remove the shifting rod. Uh, the ball itself is held on with just a single 10 millimeter bolt on the underside here. After that, we need to remove the two shift detents here and here. These are both 17 millimeter. Once you remove both of the detents, on the passenger side, there are three 10 millimeter bolts. These bolts are what hold spring pressure on the shift rod. and then slide the entire shift rod out the passenger side. Once you have taken the shift rod out, there are a total of 12 13 millimeter bolts that hold the gear carrier assembly on. So I'm gonna go ahead and break all of these loose and then we can pull the gear carrier out. Now that you have all of your bolts out of the gear carrier assembly, um, what I'm going to do is hook a chain to these two bolt holes here and then knock along to the ceiling like I did before, just to put a little bit of positive pressure so that we can break the whole gear assembly loose. Now, I'm not pulling the uh, differential out of this guy, but if you wanted to, the first thing you have to do is uh, remove the output flange, and there's actually a bolt inside it. It is another 6 millimeter Torx. It's really long. Um, it's not going to be torqued down as much as you think, so be careful with it. Once you get it out, you can remove the flange just like this, and then after the flanges come off, then you can remove the differential cover right here, it's a bunch of 13 millimeter bolts and it'll come off just like this. And then once that comes loose, the differential is literally just laying in there like this. 
So it's all unit. Um, the speedo side for mine is right here. So it went in just like that and you can just pop it right back out. So once you've removed the 016 uh, gear carrier assembly, here it is, completely laid out. Here's the input shaft um, that goes all the way back through to the end here. Uh, this is overdrive on the outside here. And then we have, I believe this is um, third and fourth gear here. And then on the inside here, back in here, we have first and second gear. And then floating around on the underside here is uh, the reverse gear. And this transmission is really cool because it was one of the first transmissions to have this uh, double output shaft set up. So basically what happens is you mate up with the engine and you turn the input shaft and then when you lock a dog gear it sends power to this output shaft here like so. But this output shaft is actually hollow and it has this secondary output shaft inside it and this pinion gear mates to the front differential. So basically what you're doing is you're sending power through this drivetrain to the back to the diff lock and then the diff lock sends power uh, to the rear wheels through this output shaft and then to the front wheels through this output shaft. And you can actually lock these two shafts together um, and that's what that center diff lock is doing. It's just locking this shaft with this shaft. So it's pretty neat stuff. So that's the basics of the 016 transmission. Um, if you guys have any questions, just post in the comments below. Like I said, I'll leave links to um, an electronic diff lock alternative and also 034, their um, replacement 016 bushing to help tighten up your shift action. So uh, thanks, I appreciate it.